All right, everyone, now we have to talk about Nate Silver. Yes, interesting pollster, of course, in 2016. You'll remember him as the man that looked like a, a sweaty catfish, actually, on election night. He's clearly a liberal. He's in favor of the Democratic Party, generally. He does have bias, although he doesn't really try to hide it. It's sort of like with me. I do poll analysis and predictions and stuff like that. I wear my bias on my sleeve. I'm fairly clear. I'm Team Trump, for example, in the current election. Don't know who I'll be team for in 2028, because Trump won't be running, of course. Um, neither will Biden, so it depends on the candidates. You know, the Republicans could nominate someone who's like a George W. figure. I'm not going to support them. I tend to lean towards classical liberalism more than anything else. Nate Silver has now abandoned Joe Biden. So the situation couldn't really get worse for poor Joe. Uh, Nate Silver is fairly staunchly in favor of liberal policies again, saying that Joe Biden should stand down. The Hawaii governor just came out and said, well, Joe Biden could make the decision the next few days whether he's going to uh, run or not. Although he's already made the fucking decision, um, he has already told people unequivocally, and politicians rarely do this, they don't like to make declarative statements. Joe Biden has said, short of an act of God, I'm running. I'm the nominee. You're just going to have to fucking deal with it. Basically, he's saying, unless I stroke out on a live stage or croak tonight or something, you know, deal with it. Uh, it's, it's not going to be Kamala. It's not going to be Sh Michelle Obama, Gavin Newsom, Gretchen Whitmer, Kathy Hochul, or any of these other morons. It's going to be me. Ironically, I'm Team Joe on that one. As far as this, again, putting my own bias aside, if I were a Democrat, I'd be hoping that Joe Biden does not drop out. Because swapping him out this late in the game would be too obtuse, it would look bad, and he, you would lose the incumbency. That's not a good thing. The fact that he's poor at debating and in cognitive decline, I think shocks many Democrat partisans less than the idea that they would have voted for him in the primaries. He's got a full mandate in that sense. But then somebody else ends up being at the top of the ticket. Whether you swap him and Kamala, which would be crazy, um, or whether she runs or whoever it happens to be, it wouldn't make any difference. So I disagree with Nate Silver's analysis here. I think it would be a disaster if you swapped out Joe Biden. Now, are there many detriments to running Joe Biden? Absolutely. He's probably going to get clobbered in September's debate, too. He is in steep physical and cognitive decline. He has nothing major to show for his presidency other than a bad economy and numerous foreign policy failures. Um, he doesn't really have that many selling points. Can I please ask you, hmm, here's a question for you. How many selling points beyond the partisan? This is a question for the handful of Democrats that hate watch me. Maybe you can elucidate a little bit. Other than strictly partisan decisions that have been made, is there any reason to believe that any of these others bring anything additionally positive to the table, other than Michelle Obama, who has categorically denied any, any chance of running for any political office in the future? I don't think that she wants to, and I think she's being genuine when she says that. I answer no. Gretchen Whitmer, Kathy Hochul, Gavin Newsom, uh, certainly Kamala Harris, all of these are partisan and divisive figures. Joe is a sleepy old man who's sundowning. He seems, I think in the minds of certain, at least left-leaning independent voters, it would be better to have Joe Biden because he would seem less vicious. That's why he was chosen as Obama's VP, to try to calm down the fears of people who were boomers that have a little bit of latent racial tendencies. Because he's seen as a befuddled old man. He was seen as the gaff master as VP. He's definitely the gaff master as president of the United States, or at least steward of the United States. Now, and now Nate Silver has abandoned him, too. It seems like most of the abandonment, though, has come from the legacy media, pollsters, like, like the, the wonk class. It's not coming from within the Democratic Party's core construct itself. Most of them have circled wagons. Although I would note that some of them are conspicuously absent when it comes to the conversation about Joe Biden's mental health. I think that they're just hoping that the problem goes away because people forget about the shitty debate performance. The problem for them is the legacy media won't stop fucking talking about it. Nate Silver joining in on the fun, uh, I suppose. Uh, they won't let it go. I was hoping to retire the Biden-Trump debate, you know, meltdown story days ago. 
I mentioned this is the last time that I'm going to bother addressing it, but I can't let it go because everyone else is talking about it. I have to be part of that conversation too because it seems to be the only thing on the U.S. public's mind. Well, is Joe going to serve out his first term? Could he survive through a second term? The answer is probably no, by the way. Um, is he cognitively fit? The, again, the answer is definitely no on that one. But somehow the alternatives are worse. That's the whole thing. Nate Silver, I think, is fundamentally wrong here, as usual. He had one good uh, election prediction cycle, and that was, was it 2012, I think it was, or 2008 or something like that. He had a couple good cycles there, and uh, people think that he's got a crystal ball. Well, I mean, yeah, okay, you're no Larry Sabato, of course. Uh, he, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Oddly enough, while it's funny, and while it's definitely helpful every time a major liberal figure does abandon Joe Biden because it creates chaos and distress within the Democratic Party, and, and that's a good thing because I want them to lose, uh, fundamentally the proposition is a losing one. I think that you have a slim chance of winning the presidency for Joe Biden. I think you have almost no chance with anyone else that you could choose other than Michelle Obama. The problem is she's unwilling to run. She has stated this, she gets at every time that they interview Michelle Obama, I almost feel sorry for her, every time that they interview her, they're like, uh, Mrs. Former First Lady, do you intend to run for the presidency? And she's like, no, fuck that shit. But they keep asking it over and over, they've done this for years. Oh my God, it, because the, the liberal want class, they fawn over the Obama family, they'd love to have them back in the White House. Will you run? Will you please be our first female president? Please, don't let it be Kamala Harris. I think that that's part of it, too. If you're going to have your first female president of color, they would much rather it be, and to an extent, I would agree with them, Michelle Obama over Kamala Harris. At least Michelle Obama doesn't laugh at dead kids. She is capable of at least putting on her game face and pretending that she doesn't find war funny. Uh, Kamala Harris lacks this particular skill. So I'll link in the description, archived, of course, Nate Silver suggesting that Joe Biden stand down, but he's not standing down. That's going to be a problem for the Democrats. I mean, if you do end up in the camp, let's say that Biden is reelected. I don't think it'll happen, but let's say in the off chance that he does manage to squeak one out. And you're a Democrat, you're, you're in office, or you're part of the want class, and you threw him under the bus. Is that going to go over particularly well for you? No. It's difficult to stand against the rungs of power. So these people, I think, are making a tactical error, and Nate Silver has just joined that club. That's about all. Peace out.